Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and I've more or less got my voice back. So that's good news. Hopefully you'll be relieved to know that. I think most people are happy I got my voice back. Maybe not my wife, but most people are happy about it. Um, so thank you very much to Mini Mule for stepping in last week. <laughs> and also thank you to the robot voices. It was a pleasure to help you out. We are not robot voices. We are artificial intelligence co-hosts. I agree that you are artificial, but you are not intelligent. Okay, well, anyway, thank you. That was very helpful. So this is the video for the 5% series. The idea being if you follow these instructions, you can more or less pick any players from this and you hopefully finish in the top 5% globally, which means you'll do all right in your mini league. Now, I'm aware that we have only uh, eight matches on this coming game week, game week 26. But it's not worth playing any chips for that. I suggest we don't play our free hit. We save our free hit for game week 29. We're going to free hit then. So it's possible some of you are going to be one or two players short this week. If you can make a transfer that's sensible in the long run to help you out, that's fine. If it ends up you're a player or two short, that's probably going to be okay as well. But we'll look at the players in a minute. First, we're going to look at the scores, what happened in game week 25. And I'm recording this while... Luton and Liverpool are still playing and I don't know the score for that at the moment so these scores don't include the scores from the Luton-Liverpool game. Starting off with the goalkeepers as always we had uh, Edison 11, Raya 6, of course Edison had a double game week, she had two chances, the other expensive keepers did nothing, I brought in Becker and then he was injured and did nothing, he just cost me four points to bring him in and and of course the points would have lost otherwise. And then the cheaper keepers, Flecking got six, he had a double game week. Kaminsky four, that's before any point he gets tonight. And then that's all. Johnston's back though, that's interesting. And of course Palace now have a new manager. We don't know if Johnston's going to remain in or not, but we need to find out what's happening there. Regarding the defenders, Walker 12, Saliba White, the three Arsenal boys all got six. And that's all for the expensive defenders. For the cheaper defenders, they did nothing. For the midfielders, the expensive midfielders, Saka 15, Odegaard 14, Salah 11. Nice to see him back, although he's not playing in the Luton game. I think he's a little bit injured. Jaco Jota got four but went off before half-time. The cheaper midfielders, Sterling 8. Now, we did speculate when he goes back to Man City he might score, and he did. Gordon 8, he's on penalties. That's good to know. Foden disappointing. And then the cheapest midfielders... Neto, Garnacho 5, the rest did nothing. But it's good to see He-Chan's back as well. Regarding the forwards, Watkins 13, that was nice. Hoyland 13, very nice. Haaland 10, very disappointing. But most people triple captained him, so it didn't actually matter. He didn't do well. Tony 7, Darwin 5, but now he's injured too. For the cheaper forwards, Solanke 12, Morris 8, Alvarez 7. They did quite well. There's some quite high scoring scores this game week. A lot of people got mid 70s or 80s up to just over 100 so yeah that's okay people following this system i know some of them got green arrows some got red arrows but none of them them were massive reds or massive greens so this coming game week we have becker he's injured he's probably going to be out for a while and he's absolutely sellable he's a lot of money it's, if you've got other moves you need to make because you're short of players, that's fine. You can keep him this week. Just play your other keeper if you want to. I've not introduced Neto yet from Bournemouth. I'll be introducing him next week. So if you've got another keeper, you may want to hold off a week and then possibly get Neto next week. Edison's okay, but expensive. And then all these keepers, they're, they're okay. If I had to get one of these, I may go for probably Pickford or Raya. The downside of Raya, who's got a good chance of clean sheets, is he takes one of your three Arsenal spots. And if you want three Arsenal players, you probably want three outfield players. Regarding the cheaper keepers, uh, Kaminsky's got a double coming up, but he's not playing this double game week. Sanchez is back from injury. We don't know if he's going to be playing yet or not, though. Johnston, we don't know if he's first choice or not. Ariola's nice and cheap and plays. Dubravka's cheap and plays. Although Pope, the Newcastle keeper I saw, is predicted to be back maybe the beginning of April. So around maybe game week 31, Pope might be back, which would be very good for the Newcastle defence. So someone like Trippier, if they start keeping clean sheets from game week 31, Trippier might be someone that everyone piles in to get. And Turner's not playing, but he is incredibly cheap and you might be happy with the keep you've got. You may have somebody and Turner 
and Turner's saving you money, so you may be okay to keep him. Obviously, he's not worth buying because he's not playing. So the expensive defenders, Trent, so Liverpool aren't playing this coming game week. He's currently flagged as injured, but the site's suggesting he's going to be back for the next game, which is away to Forest. But then they've got Man City, and then they're probably going to blank because of the FA Cup, but we don't know that for sure yet. So if you want to sell him for somebody who is playing this week, for example, an Arsenal defender, that'd be perfectly understandable. You don't have to sell him. We're keeping him in the system, but he's absolutely fine to sell. Trippier, good player. Not worth bringing in this week, though, because he's away to Arsenal. OK, Tottenham aren't playing this coming game week, so not worth buying Porro. Saliba is a good defender. Arsenal can keep clean sheets against anyone. He's got a bit of an attacking threat, so he's perfectly good to have. White, very similar to Saliba in the points he's going to get. Saliba may have the slight edge on potential attacking returns, but they're both good players. Walker, so Man City... They've obviously had their double now, and two of the next three are against Man United and Liverpool, so there's not so much chance of a clean sheet coming up. I wouldn't be buying Walker now, but you don't have to move him on. It's up to you. Gabriel's worth having if you've not got if you've got no Arsenal defenders, you definitely want to get at least one. If you're only going to get one, Gabriel's one to get because he's the cheapest, 5.2. He's alright. Estupinan, so he's been disappointed because he's not been getting played. But the next game is at home to Everton, and given that. Some of us may struggle to get 11 players out. It's all right to be playing stupid in this coming game week. And if he gets one point, well, that's better than no points for somebody who's not playing. And it might be next week you want to make changes to your team. That might have been a bit muddled. So, sorry. A stupid man is sellable if you want to sell him. You don't have to sell him, though. But if he doesn't start playing soon, we're going to have to kick him out of the system. For the cheaper defenders, Udogi's not playing. Don't buy him. Colwell's not playing. Don't buy him. Doherty's not playing. I'd say don't buy him, but he's only 4.6, but I still probably wouldn't buy him. However, uh, he has got a double game week coming up in game week 28, so lots of people are going to be wanting him for that. Pinnock is injured out for a while, and in any case, Brentford have had their double game week, so he's now out of the system. If you've got Pinnock, sell him. Concert is injured, but is expected to be back maybe the game week after next. You can keep him if you want, if you've got more important things to do. Senesi, so a lot of people will be buying Senesi for game week 28 where they've got a nice easy double, but this coming game week they're against Man City, so it's not worth buying Senesi now, but next week he may well be green. Bradley, he's bench fodder, he's filling in for Trent at the moment, but he is nice and cheap. For the midfielders, the expensive midfielders, Salah, don't buy him, even though he got 11 points last game week because he's injured and he's not playing this coming game week. We don't know the extent of his injury. De Bruyne, I've not made him green. He didn't play last game. He's got a slight niggle, apparently. It'd be interesting to see if he plays against Bournemouth or not. So I don't know about De Bruyne. If you've got him, he's fine to keep. If you want to move him on for a different midfielder, that's absolutely fine. It's not worth buying him. Sun's not playing this week. Don't buy him. Saka, very good midfielder to have. If you've not got Saka and you've got De Bruyne and you've got nothing else to do, you may want to swap De Bruyne for Saka. Odegaard is also a very good midfielder. Jota is injured, out for a couple of months at least is the prediction, so he's out of the system. Fernandes, I'm still not getting rid of him. He's still not orange. He's going to come good eventually. He's all right. The cheaper midfielders. Foden, he's all right. I probably wouldn't be buying him now. Man City, you've got Man United, Liverpool, two of the next three. Madison's not playing, so don't buy him. Bowen... He was orange. I've made him white. I was a bit unsure about him. But he's got Brentford, Everton, Burnley in the next three. They may be okay. Martinelli. I did have him as orange, but again, I've made him white. But Odegaard and Saka are better choices, but they are more expensive if you're after an Arsenal attacker. Richardson's don't buy him because Tottenham aren't playing. Sterling, don't buy him because he's not playing. But also, if you want to sell him for somebody else, that's absolutely fine. Whereas, if you've got Madison and you can get 11 players out this coming game week, I suggest you keep Madison. If you've got Sterling and you've got 11 players going out, you may want to sell him. He's If you've got Sterling and Madison you want to sell one, I'd suggest you sell Sterling. So muddled. <laughs> Maybe my brain's not quite right yet. And Gordon, he's a good buy. He's on penalties. And Newcastle do have some nice fixtures coming up. 
I've not made him green because they're away to Arsenal this week, so he's probably not going to get anything there, but he is a good player. Regarding the cheapest midfielders, we have Ward Prowse at 6 million. He's still orange. He still pops up and gets points every now and then, but there are now better midfielders that are cheaper. Palmer's a very good midfielder, but he's not playing this coming game week, so don't buy him if you've not got him. Gibbs White is sellable if you got him because there are better midfielders that are cheaper, like Neto and Huang for Wolves. They're at home to Sheffield United this week, so if you're going to make a midfielder change, Neto and or He Chan could be very good this week at home to Sheffield United. Then they're away to Newcastle, but then they're at home to Fulham. So they are both very good. They're going to be quite popular picks within the FPL community. The trouble with Palmer going back to Palmer, if you bought him quite a while ago, you've probably got a lot of money saved up in him. So if you sell him and buy him back, you're probably going to lose money. If you only bought Palmer very recently, maybe two, three weeks ago, then you possibly could sell him if you wanted to. Barkley's not playing, but he's great because he's bench fodder and he's got a double in game week 28. Garnacho, he's only fight, he's gone up to 5 million now, but he's still very, very good for 5 million. Home to Fulham, then away to Man City, then he's at home to Everton. There's three very good defenders, well, four very good midfielders, sorry, on this page if you include Palmer, but of course Palmer's not playing. Now, none of these are as good as Saka, of course, but these are nice and cheap and it give you money to spend elsewhere. A disadvantage of this system I saw a bit last year and definitely this year is people are struggling a bit of money. So I need to address that next season, but it's not like I can do about it this season. Regarding the forwards, Haaland, he's back from injury. He missed a lot of chances this game week. Don't know how much that was. Maybe he was thinking about his grandma who died recently. Was his mind elsewhere? He could have got a hat trick in the first game he played in this double game week he just had. So I've not made him green. He's clearly a very good player, but he has got after this coming game week, Man United and Liverpool. So now that he's had his double, it's not worth breaking your team, I think, to bring him in. And I think a lot of managers will be selling him when he's playing Liverpool. But uh, we need to see what transpires. Absolutely not a seller. If you've got him, absolutely keep him. This week, it's not worth breaking your team to get him in there. Watkins is still a good choice. I've made him green. Tony's a good choice. I suspect most weeks he's going to get six, seven, eight points. Maybe sometimes he'll explode and other times he get two points. But he's going to be ticking along probably. Jesus is still injured, but he may play this coming game week. If he does and you want him for a, a forward, that's fine. The issue is, though, there are three, four, five other forwards that would be better choices than Jesus. But he's still in the system. But you can sell him if you want to. Darwin is injured. We don't know how long he's out for. I've got Darwin. I'll be selling in this game week because there are better strikers to have at the moment. There's no point having someone who's not even going to play. And game after next, he's got Man City. So maybe the next game he plays is against Man City. And that's in three game week time. Hoyland, 7.2 million. Nice and cheap. Uh, home to Fulham this coming game week. Then away to Man City. Then home to Everton. The only downside with Hoyland, I'd say, is... You could probably get three alternate strikers. For example, Solanke on the next page, Haaland and Watkins are going to be the three most popular strikers. And the thing with popular players are, if there's a popular player that does well, you've not got them, it does affect your rank. So Solanke, I've not made him green because they're playing Man City this coming game week. Next week, assuming he's not injured, he will be green. Home to Burnley, then an easy double. So if you're selling Darwin, it's fine to change Darwin to Solanke this game week, then at least you've got him. But if you want to do an intermediate step, you can. But of course, it then costs you another four points. Alvarez, orange, because the fixtures may be turning a bit. And De Bruyne and Haaland are both back. Morris, bench fodder, but he's got a double in three game weeks time. Adibai is injured, but he could be back for the double when he's bench fodder. Morpé, bench fodder. We knew that when we added him to the system. Archer, I don't think he played this, coming, this game week we just had. But again, he's bench fodder. So there's lots of ways you can save money in the system if you want to. So the bench order for the goalkeepers. This is the suggested bench order. What I'm suggesting is you've got two keepers. The first one you see that you've got, you put on your bench. So uh, Kaminsky, Becker, Sanchez, none of them are even playing this coming game week. So of course they're on your bench. Turner's probably not going to be playing because he's not getting picked. So he goes on your bench. And then after that, 
Dubravka, Leno, Flecken, Pickford. Johnson, I've put him in here because he's at home to Burnley, but we don't know he's going to play. I suspect none of you have got him anyway. Edison away to Bournemouth. Then Man United home to Fulham. Ariola at home to Brentford. Now I suspect onana has got slightly more chance of a clean sheet than Ariola, but Ariola is much higher owned. So it depends how risk averse you're feeling. If you're a long way behind where you want to be and you've got Ariola and Onana, you may want to punt on Onana. But if you've got them both and you're kind of where you need to be, then Ariola is the safer choice. And then last of all, we've got Raya uh, for Arsenal at home to Newcastle. So the bench order, there's a reasonable chance you won't have any playing players on your bench. But just in case you do need to put someone on your bench, I'm going to show you players now that are playing this coming game week, or at least they should be playing. The first player you see that you've got, I suggest, is position three in your bench, next one position two, next one position one. But of course, any blanking players you've got, you put those on the bench. So Archer, Sinesi, Morpe, Gibbs White, Ward Prowse, Estupinan, Bowen, Trippier, Jesus, Alvarez, Martinelli. And I'm actually showing all the players this week that are actually playing. Walker, Gordon, White, Saliba, Gabriel, Fernandez, Garnacho, Solanke, Foden, De Bruyne, Tony, Odegaard, Hoyland, Neto, Hechan, Saka, Watkins, and Haaland. The chances are <laughs> you won't need this page. I thought about not even doing this page this week, but I thought, ah, there's a chance some of you've got 12 or 13 playing players. Regarding captaincy choice, I think there'd be quite a spread this week for captains. Haaland's a perfectly reasonable choice. Of course, there's a chance he's still going to be affected by his grandma's death and funeral and he might not be quite on the boil. Equally, he could get a hat-trick against Bournemouth. He's probably the safest captain choice. But if you want to go He Chan, he's a good choice as well. At home to Sheffield United. If you have Neto, you want to choose Neto instead, that's fine as well. Watkins, he's a good choice for captaincy, as is Saka. Saka's playing, of course, Newcastle. Newcastle have a very bad defence at the moment. Hoyland, good choice. As is Tony, any of these are perfectly reasonable. If I had all six, I would probably go for Haaland. But you need to do whatever you want. I'd suggest one of these as captain, one of these as vice captain. And if you've not got two of these, then just any of the green players we saw before, they're probably going to be all right. Regarding the background picture, and there's no chance any of you guessed this... I have a good friend who's got his birthday today and he was a language teacher. He used to teach uh, Hebrew, Latin and Greek. So I managed to uh, find this picture of some ancient statues. Three Greek philosophers here, Socrates, Plato and Aristotle, all with their footballs and thinking about them and contemplating about life. So there we have it. That's the suggestions for game week 26. I know some of us may be short of players. Don't worry about it too much. It's not worth taking lots of hits to have enough players if it's a short-term solution. But if you're taking a hit and you're getting a player that you're going to be keeping, like an Arsenal player, for example, or even one of the Wolves boys we've seen, that is kind of okay. It's not worth taking a hit to get a player who's like, nah, you're not that bothered about it and you're going to take him out again. I hope that made some sense. Sorry my voice still isn't quite right. Hopefully it'll be back to normal soon. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.